Come in. Hi, I'm Hepatitis, Hepatitis B. I was told it's a good place to look for work. Well, you've come to the right place. I've been finding jobs with viruses since before the dawn of vaccines. Sit down and we'll discuss your CV. Oh, you look different than from your photo. Oh, that was taken a long time ago. My service centres have changed since then. I just have some questions for you with regards to your CV. Tell me a bit about yourself. First and foremost, I'm a virus. I was discovered in 1963 by Barack S. Wilbur. I helped win that man a new Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. Oh, thanks, I guess. He was making his vaccine in 1967. Moving on. What kind of infections do you cause? I cause infections of the liver. I'm not to brag, but I have the most common serious liver infection in the world. I can be acute or chronic infection. Very impressive. Employers like that in the packaging. Tell me more. Acute infections can last up to six months, and I can move from person to person in that time. Unfortunately, I don't last that long in acute infections, but with the right support of care, they'll be free of me before I become chronic. With regards to chronic hepatitis, I'm still hanging around after six months later in the blood and in the liver. And if it gets to that stage, they've got me for life. Who would you say you affect most? Where I'm endemic, I can spread from mother to child at birth. Perinatal transmission, very effective. I can also spread the infected blood between children in their first five years. So these infections in children, are they chronic or acute? Infections of children are more often chronic, especially under the age of one. Wonderful. Anyone else? I can be transmitted sexually through vaginal secretions and semen, particularly in MSM. But I don't discriminate. I can also commonly affect people with multiple partners or those who have been in contact with sex workers. I can also be transmitted through contaminated needles and medical procedures such as transfusions. On the downside, infection in adulthood leads to chronic infections in less than 5%. Tell me more about the transfusion side of things. Transmission of hep B by blood transfusion is low in first world countries due to effective screening techniques. However, there was a case in Ireland in which I was transmitted by transfusion, which according to the IBTS was 1 in 2 million event. How did that happen? The donation was taken when I was undetectable in the blood, even by the most sensitive test. Tell me more about your incidents in Ireland. Well, there is a vaccine that's given to children as part of their six month vaccine when they are two, four, and six months of age. Healthcare workers and people at higher risk are also given this vaccine, so my chances of spreading in this country are poor. For example, in 2016, there was only 418 cases of chronic hep B notified to the HPSC. What symptoms do you cause in patients? I can cause jaundice, dark urine, poor appetite, fever, diarrhea or vomiting, and joint pains. So how'd you get caught? Sound really relevant. Yes, in this world of advanced technology, we need to know how good you are at hiding and how easy you are to find. Medical scientists nowadays are very well trained. Blood tests, I suppose, the most common method of detection. The blood test pattern is divided into three. There's tests from service antigens, for antibody anti-HBS, and a core antibody HBC. They can also do an ultrasound on the patient's liver, a transient elastography if you want to get technical. What does that do? It creates liver fluorosis in patients with chronic hep B. Is that all? They can also take a biopsy of the liver to see how much damage I caused. What would you say your weaknesses are? Antivirals are all the rage nowadays. Employers need to know how susceptible you are to treatment. Where an acute infection, the patient can be treated per se. If they maintain a healthy lifestyle and adequate nutrition and fluids, I'll need a CV myself. And in the chronic infection? The patient is usually on treatment for the rest of their lives because they can stop me from multiplying and damaging their liver, so they can't get rid of me with their fancy antivirals. They can take one a day for at least a year. What about immune modulators? They have, use immune, they have boost the immune system of the patient. They take them for over a month to a year. I'll go into plan if I have one enough, they should need a liver transplant. So what complications can you cause in patients? Well, in chronic infections, I can cause liver failure, liver cancer, and psoriasis. Can you give me figures to back up these claims? Well, if you bother to read my CV, you know that psoriasis is scarring the liver, and one in five people with chronic hepatitis will develop psoriasis of the liver years after the initial infection. And these people have a one in 20 chance of developing liver cancer. What about an acute infection? One in a hundred acute hep B cases will result in fulminant hep B. Which is? A serious condition in which the patient's immune system attacks the liver, which is not treated, can be fatal. As a final question, are there any preventative measures people can take to reduce your spread? As I was saying earlier, there is a vaccine that was covered in 1967 by aforementioned Bloomberg. People are also recommended to get the vaccine if they are visiting a region with high incidence of hep B, like Sub-Saharan Africa. Unfortunately, the immunity is long-lasting, but for people with HIV, a booster is usually given. Is that everything? If a person is exposed to me, there is a post-exposure prophylactic treatment. Hep B immunoglobulin can be administered. There is antibodies that work against me from donated blood and provides immediate protection. Well, your CV is very impressive and I'm sure we'll have a job for you very soon.